and welcome to this week's YouTube vlog from Barton Alberner Services and I hope we're all okay. As always, thanks for the comments we got last week. We actually got some really good comments, which was great. Thank you very much for that. And I have replied to everyone now because I know I got a little bit behind, so I'm sorry about that. And most importantly, subscribers. We gained the most subscribers we've ever gained in a week last week. Thank you so much. It was amazing. We're really pleased about that. And please, please do keep it up. Moving swiftly on to this week's vlog. We are going to do, well, basically, we'll just call it bits and bobs. We have had lots of requests, really random stuff. And we thought that rather than it build up, we must have a good 10, 15 things. We'd sort of like every so often do a week where we do a couple of three of them. And it can range from anything like people that understand thread sizes, which is a really random one, right through to I want to take a sterling burner to pieces, stuff like that. We're just gonna go through a few at a time as the weeks go on. So what I'm gonna do this time around is we're, yeah, we've had quite a lot of people ask us about insulating pipes actually. This includes my boys because yeah, people think insulating pipes are doddle. When you're used to it, it is, but it can be a right old fiddle. And it's one of them where it's like practice makes perfect. Because if you get it wrong, it looks rubbish. If you get it half right, you can sort of cover it up, but it's sort of all right. If you get it really good, it looks the absolute bee's knees. And yes, we know there's lots and lots of A's out there to help you, and I'm actually gonna use one. Yeah, I'm, I'm limited to 13 millimeter thickness of pipe because of what I'm using this time, but I'm hoping it's just gonna help people get the basic understanding. I'm on my way home now. I'm going to just make a small jig out of some copper pipe out of some 90 degrees, 45 T, stuff like that. And then that'll make it easy for me to show you how to do the cuts of insulation. So that's what I'm gonna be doing first. And then after that, I think hmm, I'm gonna go, a weird one, rope seals. We've had a few people ask us about rope seals, different sizes, best way to fit them, best glues to use, stuff like that. So that's what we're gonna do secondly. This is gonna be random bits and bobs, but like I've always said all the way through, the idea of this channel is to help people. So if some of you see it and think, what on earth are they doing this week? Well, that's because someone actually else wanted to know. So that's why we do it. Let's get on with it. I'm not gonna go on anymore. Let's get on with this week's vlog. Okay, I'm home like a true professional. We're gonna do it on a bin, a bit of cardboard. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it really simple. I know there's lots of bends when you do copper pipe and stuff like that. Um, so you have to work them out as you go. But we need to start simple. I'm literally gonna have a pipe come down and round that be 90 degrees. It's gonna come down here, 90 degrees again. That will be a T. It's gonna come up another 90 to the T. And then we're gonna have like a 45, a 45, a 90 and a down something like that that might go further that way that means they can practice 90 degrees they can practice t's and they can practice 45 degrees and they should be able to fill all that with the insulation i've just gone and got some really cheap thin insulation not what i normally use it's come from screw fix nothing wrong with it but it's not what i normally use i'm going to make something cup now out of copper pipe there's the fittings there which i'm going to use once i've done that and it's all together then I will show you how I'd go about insulating that. And this is just a good tool, like I said, for the boys. Once they've got this, they can just keep practicing. I don't mind buying, you know, 20 meters of insulation. They can just keep cutting it and practicing until they get it right. As I say, there's a lot of other variations and bends, and yes, it's a lot harder than this. But if you get the basics right, the rest will just come naturally. Okay, I've jumped for 10 minutes, because I'm not going to show you how to cut and solder, because, yeah, I've shown people before that anyway. There's your perfect square there. Well, not perfect, but nearly perfect square, but it is square perfect 90 degrees i've got a long piece of copper off there is short there i'm now going to sort of kick up here kick along and then an elbow and come down and then i've completed my piece of pipe for the boys and then what i will do is i'll come back to you when i've cleaned it and shown you and then it'll be a case of getting on and doing the next step voila let's have a little look sort of not bad so I'm going to give this a good clean up now because otherwise the flux is just going to go green on there. And then what I'll probably do is, or what you can do is I'll mount it on a bit of wood, mount it on a wall to make it easier. So it's got clips on it, so it's stepped off the wall or stepped off the floor in this case. The reason being is because it's easier when you're insulating, so it's more like a real situation. I know this seems those TT a little bit, but you've got to make it as realistic as possible because then it's the only way you're going to learn. And then they can keep practicing and practicing on this when they've got this 
up and running and how it should be then obviously they can do a bit more and then it should be neat and tidy because you can just spend hours being bored just cutting bits of insulation on this at the end of the day so i'm going to give this a good clean up now i'm going to put some clips on it and i'm going to probably mount it on a small bit of wood and then we have it it's all cleaned up and it's all on a board and it's all obviously clipped to the board like so i'm going to take you to the office tomorrow and then isabel will be on the proper camera and i'll show you how to insulate these pipes and the best procedure to do it now i know there's so many different versions and different ways that people do it and people say the way i do it's wrong but it works for me so i'm going to show you the basic way i do it but it's up to you guys to elaborate till tomorrow sleep well we're in the office as i say and isabel's recording say hello, hello. there we go right so the insulation we carry we've got like there's your 22 and your 28 which is like quite a thick wall there and then obviously that's a thinner wall version so that's like 13. obviously we do it in the 15 mil which is the thicker wall as well and then you've got your armor flex which is this is for exterior this is pretty good it's a lot harder to work with but essentially with this you can just pull these off here like so and the good news about this one is oh, it sticks together so it's well sealed that's why i use it for exterior so they're the variation we've got it for condensed pipe as well i know you can get the condensed pro pipe with the insulation and all that but we just essentially do that at the end of the day right so that's the pipe so i'm just going to put them to one side when i cut insulation i've used a knife like this or I've got a really old fashioned old dinner knife from home that I've sharpened up as well that I've left at home so you can't see that. Or I bought one of these a while ago which is quite good. This goes with an actual tool as well. Keep it sharp, it, it, it's okay. I don't use it as much as I used to. But in this case, what we're gonna use as an aid is we are gonna use these, which as you can see are nice and easy. So these are, what are they called? They're lag cutters pros leg cutter pros that's what they are these are called leg cutter pros there we go okay so the idea is these are for 13 mil thick only and then what you can basically do is you can put them on one you, this is for 22 mil so you can put this in here and do your cuts you want to do and then for the thinner stuff obviously you can use the 15 mil one is there when you're first starting out and trying this the easiest way until practice makes perfect is at the back you'll see a cut or a slice i've done it already but you just put your finger down there like so we'll do a 90 degree angle first so the idea is that should always go over the top away from you like so the easiest way to do it is just to have it so it's obviously behind put a mark on it so you know where it's going and then just to make it easy for you for a start because you know you need to be putting an angle across there just sort of do that I know it's cheating but if you haven't done it before then you know what you're doing put it in the device like so you'll now see it's upright you'll now see there's a nice angle get your knife and just very slowly go down it like so and because we're going to make it easy for you I'm literally just going to turn that over we're going to grab it and we're just going to cut it. Okay, so this is all for practice only. So now you've got half of your corner perfect. So we're just going to repeat exactly the same. Again, it goes down. We're going to put the mark here. Like so. We're then going to go like that. So we obviously know. And then we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to put it in the machine like so. We're going to line it up little cut go down a bit turn it over cut and if you see what you'll get is a perfect corner so that that is the best way to do it and then if you go around all of it the same and then if you want to you can just get a tape measure sort of measure in between here and here and then cut a bit and put in the middle that's sort of like not perfect, but it's it's a good starting point because at least you've got neat corners and it's like it's supposed to be. We're now going to go onto a T here. Again, we're going to have it so it faces downhill. We're just going to make it easy. We're just going to like cut a bit off here first. Okay, again, oh, let's use the right one, Robert. We're just going to cut a small bit off here. Like so. And then again, faces downhill, like here. We'll put a mark in the middle and we'll put a mark on this back end. The reason we're doing that is because we're going to put it in. That's the middle point like that, which is like this here. So you can see that's like that. Okay, and then we're going to spin that like so. Once we've done that, we're going to cut this out of here. One, two, and as you can see, 
this is half your problem solved. We're now going to do the bit the other way. So again, we're just going to cut a little bit off here to make life easy for ourselves. And then with this one, again, there's the downhill, so we know that this is the top mark. And basically we're going to go like that, and we're going to go like that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put this in the machine like so. Which should be one way. And then what we're going to do is we're going to spin it around, and that needs to go about halfway. So the easiest way to do that is if you put a mark again in the middle, just so you know, and a mark in the middle of your machine, then you can just line them up like so. And then when you've done that, you can give it a very small cut. And then with a bit of luck, hey presto. And that's how that goes. The reason it hasn't gone in there, I would trim it, because as you can see, there's just a tiny bit here. So I would just like literally take that off there. And then as you can see, that will fit properly. That is your basics. For 45 degree angle ones, it's slightly different because this machine doesn't do it. But the way I find best for people is, again, open it up. Sometimes it can be quite hard. It's facing downhill. There's your mark on the top. Just get your machine. For example, this one's gonna go this way. So if you can see, it needs to go like that. But it's not the full 45 degrees, it's half of it. So I tend to put a mark on here. And then between here and here, I halve it. And that's where my mark's going to be. So what I then do is, just by hand, I then cut it from that mark straight across to the corner and down. We'll just cut that in half. That's half your problem sorted. And then we'll get the other one, and we have exactly the same here. I halve it, which is here. I then get it. I cut it and then this is the wrong way around but we'll show my point there we go that's how I do it all right but that needed to be that way so I've cut it back to front that's how I tend to do them there's hundreds of ways of doing it but that's the way I find easier to teach people and then you just find your own way the last thing to get your distances which obviously is quite important what I tend to do is if we want to go all the way along there, for example, the first thing I will do is again, I'll open up a piece of pipe. So don't do that too fast because it gets your finger a bit hot. Right. I'll open that up like so, that's downhill. I'll put a mark at the top, we're going to put that on first. We're going to do that, we're going to cut it. Like so. That's the middle there. We're then going to come down to here. That's our mark there. Obviously we're still in the middle there, which is there. And obviously, as you know, we need to cut a little bit out like so. So I'm just gonna do that next. Mark in the middle. One. Two. Okay, so that's that and that. And when I get to this end, Basically, you need to make sure that you have a mark in the middle of that pipe. That is the middle, that is dead middle of what your angle is going to be. So we'll turn that over. And that means that dead middle is going to be there because of the mark earlier. And we will basically go down there. Once you've done that, let's move these out of the way. That should then just go over. That should go over. go over there and as you can see that is spot on and then if we find it if it's still here where's that gone Isabel we have the little bit sticking out here we go that will obviously go in there lovely like so and then that one will go on there lovely like so finally we just pop this one back on here and as you can see that's done when you come to your pipe clips, it will just go over your pipe clips and go around there. If it's massive pipe clips, you might have to take a bit out of the back. We've done 45s, we've done 90s, we've done the length. When you come to finishing the product off, like for example, if I put, get an old one, here's one I've done earlier. 
but I get rid of that and that. When you come to doing the measurement between here, I always add five mil. So when I come from here to here, it's 27 centimeters. I have just cut this, to be honest, a little while ago. That is 27 and a half. And the reason I do that is because if it's dead on 27, when you've done it, after a while, you get a small gap like that. But with this, if I put it in, as you can see, it's gone on a lot tighter and then you won't get that gap in. So that's what I do. Whenever I do anything in between or any lengths, I always tend to add five mil. That is pipe insulation complete. I don't need to show you anything else on that. Obviously, this is brilliant because the boys going to have a good go at this now and they should be able to make it all look nice and neat and tidy. So now we are on to the second part of our vlog, which is rope seals. So over to the rope seals. Rope seals, not much to say about rope seals. So the ones we keep, 10 mil, 13 mil, 15 mil, 20 mil, and importantly, ladder tape. On most boilers, obviously they all have rope seals, combustion seals on them to stop the gases escaping. Some things like warm flows and stuff like that have their own unique one. But obviously on most boilers, especially older boilers, they have one of these. So if you're putting Grant original seals on and you're buying them in Grant packets, then it's pointless. You might as well buy a 20 mil rope like this because this is much, much better and nice and flexible. We use 15 mil on most other stuff. So all your older boilers like your cam rays and your thermocons and stuff like that, this is what we use. So essentially you have a combustion chamber lid, you have ash board inside it, and then this sort of goes around it. Then we drop down to 30 13 mil. This is an actual wall star one. You can buy them in two meter lengths on wall star, but we've also got it on the reel. So this is for wall star, and also this would be used on argolids. So you can get proper argolid ones which have got like a metal surround around them. But if you want a cheap alternative, this one 13 mil. And then the 10 mil, essentially some Rayburns, Essie cookers, and just generally used for general purpose stuff. Okay, so a lot of people have asked us what we do. The most important thing I'll say when we do it is obviously they need gluing in, but you can't just glue them in with normal silicon. It has to be heat resistant silicon. So we either get Regan heat resistant silicon, any color, because it doesn't matter, or we get the no nonsense from Screwfix, which is also just as good and it's a bit cheaper. All I can say to people is that there's no right or wrong when you do combustion seal, so to speak, except for, let's use this as an example here. We put our bead of silicon around like so, but when you actually stick your rope seal on, you must come up, but always turn it into a corner. Never go across a corner, always go into a corner so it's tight. Because if you don't and it goes like that, then you get leaks of combustion gases and stuff like that. That's all you need to know really. It's as simple as that, you do it nice and tight. You don't have to use loads of silicon, bits of spots, push it in, once you get the chamber lid on it's fine. On the wall stars, when you take the old gasket off on the back of them, you have to make sure you scrape the old one off, you keep it clean. Again, put a little bit around. Do not put, have I got a lid there? No, do not put it on the lids. We see a lot of people that actually stick them to the lids. It doesn't work. And finally, when you come to your Grant one, on most of the floor mounted ones, you've obviously got the big combustion chamber lid. This then goes round, but halfway down, you'll see a couple little bit more bits of rope that stick out, just a bit more silicon there. It's just where there's a join. So as long as, again, you push it tight, it'll be fine. Also, don't pull it so it's thinner, like this one here. You must bunch it up when you do it. So when you're putting it in, make sure you bunch it up slightly, or minimum, you have it the original size because if you don't then what you'll find is again you'll get leaks or if you bunch it up too hard you'll get a problem with the combustion chamber it doesn't fit and finally for the people who's got the older boilers Valaire's Valaire for Tessis with the lid on the top they actually have this this is for light commercial as well it's ladder tape the idea of this is as you can see you can put your finger through that so you've got studs that stick up this basically goes over the studs and then goes round you can either cut it so you have four pieces, one, two, three, four, or what a lot of people do is when you get to a corner, you fold it like so, and across there is good enough and will seal it. 
that is literally all I've got to tell you about rope seal. So I hope that's helped whoever it was. If you want more information on our service vlogs and stuff like that, you'll see us actually changing seals and you'll see it in, well, us doing it in anger, so to speak. That's it. That is the end of this week's YouTube vlog and I hope you enjoyed it. Yes, it's been a little bit different. And like I said to you at the beginning, very clearly, this wasn't going to be for everyone. We're just trying to help everyone. The idea of this channel, help everybody. And then at the end of the day, Hopefully we have helped people and then for the people who already know it, maybe on the next one it'd be something that you will learn, who knows. So I hope you have a great weekend everyone and as always, stay safe.